2.53 p.m. Pacific, followed by the mains just one minute later at 2.54 p.m. Pacific time, ahead of a splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Three pretty, pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. All right, we're going to start hearing uh, the SpaceX crew operations research, resource engineer. SpaceX, Freedom is with you. 4.6 feet, enjoying the ride. Copy that, Freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer. Expect automated shoot deployment. Like we said before, things moving very quickly as Dragon Freedom makes its way home. Next event uh, coming up will be deployment of the drogue parachutes. This occurs around 18,000 feet. GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue chute deployment. We're about two minutes away from deployment of those drogue parachutes. Now the heat shield uh, is, is continuing to work to slow the vehicle down. That, that entry period, the, the, space, the, excuse me, the, the Dragon spacecraft went from orbital velocity about 17,500 miles per hour down to about 350 miles per hour. So that really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to uh, about 119 miles per hour. We can see 15 kilometers. Brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. Once again, the capsules are going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those drogue parachutes that we manufacture here in-house are uh, going to slow the, the, the spacecraft down to 119 miles per hour. And that is when we will see the main parachutes deploy, and that occurs about 6,000 feet above the ocean's surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom. As it returns back to Earth, we are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate nominal. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside... Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Thanks, Freedom. 
We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining yeah. us, you're looking at 800 meters. A live view of Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Coffee, was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their, uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for Splashdown, located in the Gulf of America, um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And Splashdown, Crew 9, back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. So at 3.28 a.m. on the 19th of March, 286 days after Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore had left from the earth, they've successfully come back. A technical snag had them up in the space for nearly nine months. But all of that has come to an end. 3.28 a.m. That's when the landing took place. The soft splash happened. The splashdown happened exactly how the NASA team, in partnership with the SpaceX, would have wanted things to happen. And everything happening to a T. Exactly how the engineers, the scientists, the astronauts would have wanted things to play out. There were plenty of complexities, be it the deorbiting, be it uh, the seven crucial phases that had to all happen in a proper manner for the landing to take place perfectly and everything just played out the way that uh, the concerned stakeholders would have wanted. 286 days and nearly nine months is what two astronauts had to spend up in the space and now they're finally back home back to the earth and they will now be taken off uh, they'll be taken away they'll be taken to the shores uh, in just a couple of moments uh, there'll be fast boats that'll soon be approaching the capsule the name of the capsule was named freedom need not explain why that name was given and uh, freedom would mean so much to the two astronauts who were stranded uh, in space for nearly nine months. Uh, they will undergo a few, tech, uh, few tests as well. Uh, medical examinations will have to happen. There is so much that is in the offing over here. But uh, 
this is a momentous day for not just um, as indians for us to see one of our own daughters come back to the earth but for space for science for technology there is so much that the two astronauts will uh, be sharing in due course with the nasa with the uh, concerned stakeholders as well as uh, we go forward now let me go across to trimel firstly trimel stupendous what we witnessed over here everything working out exactly the way as we reported exactly the way that we were told by the scientists as well everyone at nasa congratulations to uh, to america congratulations to nasa for doing a fabulous job it's exactly been uh, you know the script that they would have had in mind and they'd be very proud of what they've uh, seen today exactly this is this deserves a round of applause just just to give the work and i'm sure like the people in houston at headquarters that they were doing their own cheering and in in and as you can see look at all the boats going there to do the the, the rescue of taking them out of that capsule the return of the dragon the freedom and 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 so much it looks so tiny in them but of course the the ocean is so vast and um to see this this historic event take place it's it's really impressive and a feat in technological advances that we've seen over the years to be able to see inside of that capsule um so soon with the clear crisp images and to see them all all four astronauts um lay there safely as this vehicle guide them um instead of them like you know it's an autonomous vehicle that's bringing them back home and and there they are getting that 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 first touch of um humans here on earth <laughs> reconnecting with them once they get to open that capsule it's 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 great to witness indeed you know the images are crystal clear you know uh, even though uh, we, we you know you you're away from where where the actual uh, actions happening i'm i'm miles and miles away uh, of, uh, from from uh, where it's all happening but the images are just super they 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 they, um, they they carry so much meaning you know it it's a picture that conveys a thousand words at the moment and so much that it means for humanity as well trimel right yes and even though you're 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 miles away like i'm i'm the same and we're all seeing the same image it's as if we can reach out and touch the capsule there um and it's it's remarkable to have this this view uh, long ago we couldn't see any of this it, it was not visible and uh, so much has advanced within just a short amount of period of time to be able to see that look at those parachutes it was so beautiful it looked like a uh, jellyfish in in the sky <laughs> um just to to see them there on their back home safe can you imagine the celebrations that's going on um Sue's mother as we heard that they were planning a watch party so they're likely celebrating yeah. all the other astronauts Bush um Bush and Nick and, and they're all celebrating the return of their their family members so it's it's really great and exciting not just for their family but for the countries that are are watching and and represented um by them through them so it's really a good um moment right now let me also get um you know my colleague pramod madhav's reaction to me just hold on pramod the moment that we were all waiting for um, just a couple of minutes delay though 3 uh, 27 i think is what we were expecting here in india in fact just a minute away from that 328 is when that historic moment happened but uh, talk us through uh, what you witnessed the very very um, uh, special images on the screen uh, they say a thousand words these images but uh, how is it that you look at this uh, historic moment it's it's absolutely amazing harshit the way they actually were able to actually also track imagine like we said earlier during the loss of signal period during that reentry it's a kind of a blackout period nobody mm-hmm. exactly knows what happens but this time what i witnessed is that a high altitude plane of nasa the wb57 they used that plane i think they also used an infrared camera to capture the actual image of that reentry and you saw a kind of like a flame that was surrounding the entire capsule and if you could see the capsule right now you could see the kind of battering it has gone through the kind of uh, you know the su- suit that is over all over that particular capsule over there and that's actual evidence like i said earlier these are treasure trove of knowledge 
practical knowledge that we are gaining and we saw it very clearly and imagine the WB57 aircraft being able to record the re-entry very clearly and I, I could actually see a little bit of alteration with the, the, the capsule moving a little bit left and right but all these things were stabilized and was brought down and just like Trimel said about the drogue parachutes opening up and then the main parachutes and exact moment of touchdown the main parachutes being released it's absolutely textbook and now you see the entire speed you know, uh, fastboard crew has approached the capsule the sea is so calm it's a beautiful uh, you know uh, whatever has happened is absolutely amazing and uh, it's absolute kudos to uh, SpaceX crew and NASA what they have done is really amazing and to capture it step by step to show the world that this is how it's being done is something a step forward and it's it's actually like letting everybody know that space has become much more safe now Harshit. Absolutely absolutely you make very pertinent points over there promote the let me go across to Tremel, who continues to be with us. Tremel, in terms of, uh, you know, the great missions that NASA has done in the past, where would this one perhaps be if you could, uh, you know, tell us a bit more on that? Oh, <laughs> well, well, this one is certainly up there in, 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 in as far as the modernization of what we were able to see. Every mission is important and critical to NASA. Um, they don't um, <laughs> um, cut corners on it because it's such a delicate process to have these high powered vehicles go up and the unpredictability of reentry as um, has just talked about and that watching that capsule heat up to 300 homage degrees <laughs> To, to survive that, it's a very delicate process and it's nothing short of remarkable to be able to see this. So when we see incidents where things go wrong, it, like, you know, it's unfortunate in those instances when things aren't right, but when they do go right, it, it's just the same, the amount of effort, dedication, science, and the, the work that puts in to make sure that everything is 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 really on top of it and and safe for these individuals um, to get these uh, astronauts back home. So they took safety precautions, as you know. So even though, like you know, the Starliner uh, with the issues that it was having, it was you know very well thought out to not take the risk to have them come back um, because they didn't want to risk anything. So it was a long wait, but gladly they waited and they're back home safe. And it's a moment to celebrate and rejoice and look at that remarkable boat out there where they're going to be docked <laughs> and then get medical care to make sure their reentry, their personal reentry is really top notch. And, and so they're back up and walking and, and being about like yeah. we are. Let me let me give our viewers a sense of what exactly they're seeing right now. Stunning visuals, firstly, of the Atlantic that we see right now. The capsules landed, uh, has landed. Uh, the splashdowns happened. But this, what you're seeing right now, is the rigging process. This is when you'll see the recovery person enter the capsule, enter uh, freedom, and get the four uh, astronauts out. After which, there'll be an extensive. Uh, medical examination that the four of them will have to undergo. There's plenty, um, you know, that uh, they, the, the four of them will have to undergo in terms of medical examination. And it, it's going to be a step-by-step -step process for them to be exposed to the air, to, to, to be out in the open as well. That sense of normalcy is not going to be that straightforward. And uh, you can't be thinking that just because they're back on the surface of the earth,